Welcome to History Lesson 74. We are going to continue to learn about Noah Webster. So we left off on page 202 in our history books. If you don't have your history book, pause the video, go ahead and grab your history book and open up to page 202 so we can finish Noah Webster together. Now that you have your history book and you're looking at page 202, we have left off where Noah Webster was writing um, dictionary or no, the school books for those children in school as a teacher. Now, he married a woman named Rebecca Greenleaf, who actually is related to John Greenleaf Whittier, which we are going to learn about him coming up very soon after Noah Webster. So they got married and years passed and they ended up having eight children, six girls and two boys. Now, Noah Webster, during that time when he was 50, about 50 years old, realized that he was finding himself looking at the things that he did to get um, become to be happy about himself and was realizing that it wasn't quite right. And he was reading the Bible. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 10, it says, there is none righteous. No, not one. So after he read this Bible verse and probably other verses in the Bible, as he was just doing his studying of God's word, he realized that him finding happiness in the things that he has done is not what is true happiness. His true happiness is when he finally decided to ask Jesus into his heart. And as a result, he, having Jesus in his heart, put it on his family for them to study every night God's word. And they would talk and discuss it. As a result, three of his daughters ended up accepting Jesus as their savior as well. Now, as time went on, um, Noah Webster realized that there were a lot of words that were not in a book that the Americans have. So they came from England into the New World and they probably brought an English or an England dictionary with them. But being in the New World, they didn't use all the words that are in the English dictionary. They had their own kind of words. So Noah Webster began the biggest job of his life, which is writing the American dictionary. He wasn't an Englishman, and he thought that some of the words that were in the English dictionary could be changed and by spelling it and maybe even different meanings for the American language. So he began to write the American English Dictionary. He took 20 different languages, studied the words, studied the definitions, so that when he wrote the dictionary, he was able to give a thorough definition of that word. So it is because of Noah Webster researching and being willing to write different, I mean, all these words that we have today we are able to look up a word in a dictionary or on a computer, dictionary.com. We're able to look it up all because of a Christian man named Noah Webster. Now, it took Noah Webster 20 years before he finished the first American English Dictionary. So, the first printing of the American English Dictionary contained over 70,000 words, okay? The words were also defined so that people understood what it meant. And Noah Webster took the time, 20 years, to write that dictionary. Now, once he wrote it, once he wrote that first American Dictionary, was the dictionary finished forever? Hopefully you said no, because even now we have new words coming out or we have 
words that have now new meaning because of our culture and the way our society is. So even though Noah Webster started the dictionary, it was not finished. Words would continue to um, come out and be defined as something different or in um, science was being discovered and new words would come to be in that dictionary. Now, what I want you to do is read pages 202 all the way to 205. And that will tell you about what I've just told you. And it will give you a little modern twist on what we know today as our dictionary. Once you're done reading those pages, I want you to look on Google Classroom for some questions about Noah Webster. You'll notice that after page 205, we're done learning about Noah Webster. So we will begin to learn about another person tomorrow. But before we do, let's check our understanding of Noah Webster. Also, I want you to take out your math skills book and you will be working on a review of your Midwest region. Now, we should be um, aware of the states and their capitals in the Midwest region. We are beginning to review and learn our uh, west region, southwest region, excuse me, uh, of our states and capitals. So once you read, answer the questions on Google Classroom, then do your map skills, map skills sheet number 16, which is a review of your Midwest region. Once you've done that, have your parent take a photo and email me the work that you did in your map skills book. Happy studying.